tonight on 7 News First at 5. Next on 7 News First at 5, breaking news. A child is rescued after falling through the ice at a Cape Cod pond. We will have the very latest on this story. A fire relief for workers at the burnt out Malden Mills tonight. New concerns about air quality. We're live with that story. Brace yourself. Another snowstorm is moving in. It may pack a one-two punch. And Sarah talks to Oscar Winnet in the Thompson about her new movie, Sense and Sensibility. 7 News is next. It's your last chance can't stop and run right into <laughs> Next, on 7 News, first at 5. Getting relief to the victims of that devastating mill fire in Methuen. We're live with the very latest. Get ready for a one-two punch from nature. A snowstorm hitting other parts of the nation is headed our way. An emotional day in court. The father of a murdered baby breaks down as the suspect is arraigned. In HealthCast, a new way to overpower the pain of a migraine. 7 News at 5 is right now. Broadcasting live from Channel 7. New England's news station. Kim Kerrigan and John Marler bring you 7 News First at 5. Good evening, I'm John Marler. And I'm Kim Kerrigan. It's a bittersweet day for workers at a Methuen mill devastated by a raging fire. First at 5, workers line up for their final paychecks before the holidays. Their jobs went up in smoke on Monday. 7 News reporter Victoria Block is live in Methuen and she has our top story tonight. Vicki? Several of the workers who came back here today say that it looks like somebody just dropped a bomb on this place and then walked away. They still are struggling with their emotions, but life got a little easier for them today. They got paid. As firefighters doused pockets of flames at the burned out mill, displaced workers were picking up paychecks. It was a good feeling, but bittersweet. They don't know where the next check will be coming from. You know, when you start losing all your tools, you know, that's your life life, you know, and now it's it's gone, you know. It's... Under police escort, area residents evacuated from their homes were allowed to go home. The heat is all right in here. Nice right? But it was only to pick up essentials, extra clothing, and medicine. What are they telling you? Something's wrong with the air, and they still have to te do some tests on the air, and it's not safe for our, us and the family. But EPA officials had good news for them today. After touring the site, they did not find sulfur, cyanide, or chlorine in preliminary test results. We haven't detected anything of concern. Uh, the air quality, aside from just smoke, appears to be uh, excellent. But everyone here still has a long way to go. The fire has taken its toll on an entire community. Firefighters are exhausted, but officials are making progress in their investigation. They know an explosion started the firestorm, but now they don't think it started in the boiler room. The floor of origin is floor two of the original fire building, and in that room, in that area, is, was a basic processing operation. The operation for local firefighters remains the same, continue to hose down the fires and let a gas main burn itself out. So how long will you have somebody stationed here? Around the clock until the last number is out, now until there's no more smoke and that may be for over a week. FEMA has set up an informational center at the local Knights of Columbus Hall. It's located at 462 Broadway. It'll be open until 6 today, and if you need any information about some of the victims of this fire or information about resources, it'll be open tomorrow from 9 to 6 as well as Friday from 9 to 6. The owner of Malden Mills was here earlier today touring this place, and he said that within the next 30 days, he hopes to start calling some of the workers back, and that within the next several months, he's hoping that he can employ at least two-thirds of the original workforce. Reporting live from Methuen, I'm Victoria Block, 7 News. Becky, thank you. There is little change tonight in the conditions of 13 people still hospitalized for injuries suffered in that fire. Those injuries include second and third degree burns and smoke inhalation. The injured were taken to hospitals throughout the state. Now, tonight, eight people remain in critical condition. One is in serious condition. Another is in fair condition. Three people are in stable but guarded condition. Coming up on 7 News at 6, helping the victims, Bernard Cardinal Law goes to Methuen to help plan relief efforts. And we have breaking news this evening from Cape Cod. Rescue workers are trying to revive a young boy who fell through the ice on Flags Pond in Dennis. Now, the pond is off South Yarmouth Road. 
The boy apparently broke through the ice about an hour ago and was in the water for 20 minutes. We have been told he had no pulse when rescuers got him out. The boy is being flown right now to Boston City Hospital. Tomorrow afternoon's commute could be a very tricky one. We're in for another storm. More snow is expected to fall in our area on Thursday. That storm system is moving in from the west. And Chicago and other parts of the west already blanketed with the snow. And that's the same snow-making system that's coming our way. Let's check in with 7 News Chief Meteorologist Harvey Leonard for the very latest. Harv? All right, a great temperature contrast exists, and that's what's fueling the fire for this particular snow episode to come for us. It remains very cold here in the Northeast. You probably didn't find it as cold today because the wind was lighter, but the temperatures haven't changed much. But we have very warm air to the south, and between the two, we have a battle zone, and along the battle zone, snow has been developing and following that battle zone. And as it all lifts to the east-northeast with time, this area is going to come through our area during the day tomorrow. I do have some limited good news for you. It does look like the snow should hold off until just about the end of the morning commute. But the evening commute will probably feature snow falling at a steady clip with small accumulations and very slippery going at that time. Good and bad news. Harvey, thanks. And his full forecast is coming up in just about 10 minutes. A rain of man is held without bail tonight, accused of killing his girlfriend's son. Eric Peters pleaded not guilty today. 14-month-old Justin Bento died Monday. His mother and Peters called paramedics saying the baby had stopped breathing. The body was covered with bruises. Police believe the baby was beaten to death. The baby's father is devastated. Yeah. I'm hurt. How could anybody do this? He's not a person. He's an animal. Look at him. Could you, what could you do to him? What could you do? Nothing. I don't care if he cries or not. He's a little boy. That's what boys do. The baby's mother has not been charged. A mental patient accused of kidnapping a four-month-old baby on Cape Cod pleads not guilty today. Jacqueline Sevior is ordered to undergo a psychiatric evaluation. She was arrested last night in Medford after an off-duty firefighter spotted her with that baby. The baby was reported missing Monday by her mother. Louise Lamb told police she left the child in a car with Sevior, who then took off. The little girl is now in DSS custody. We have been involved with her for a number of years. She has two older children that are 10 and 5 that have been in DSS custody for the last two years. Uh, this child was born a couple of months ago. At that time, there were no concerns around her parenting for that particular child. Uh, but obviously, given what's happened in the last few days, uh, we have some very serious concerns. Jacqueline Sevior was reported missing from a mental health facility. She told police she was ordered to take the baby by the deceased son of actor Tony Curtis. President Clinton heads to Paris to sign the Bosnia peace plan. He takes with him U.S. Senate support for the American mission of peace. 7 News reporter Tom Cole has details now live from Washington, D.C. Tom? John, not quite yet. The Senate's been voting and debating on a series of three resolutions on Bosnia. The most critical one belonging to Majority Leader Bob Dole, who has grudgingly sided with the president. In the end, I just can't believe that Congress won't support our troops in this mission. That's what I think will happen. The president is right, of course. The Senate will not bail out on American troops facing a hostile opponent. But some Republicans today did try to stop the funding for the Bosnia peacekeeping plan. I believe that we have to take the strongest stand possible. I believe that this is a mistake. I believe the policy is not a logical policy to promote American interest. I don't want to send troops to Bosnia. I cannot accept the responsibility of voting to place them there in the first place simply for the purpose of preserving U.S. credibility. Mr. By a three-to-one margin, the Senate defeated the attempt to halt the troop deployment no, by cutting Mr. off its Cole. funds. The troop deployment is viewed by many as the last best hope for peace. Because of U.S. leadership so far, they are not going there to fight a war. There is no longer a war to fight. And with U.S. leadership in the year ahead, there's a good chance the war will never resume. The Senate's the intent seems to be to give the, the president uh, its our grudging our support. The president will take that because while he understands the political peril, he imagines a much more noble reason, one outlined today in the Oval Office by Nobel Prize winner Elie Wiesel. To send American men and women to preserve the peace is an act of courage and of decency. 
And I use the word advisedly. It's an act of morality. The president is supposed to be wheels up for Paris in about an hour from now. Senator Dole had hoped to have the vote to him before then. That won't happen. But the Senate will have approved the measure before the president touches down in France. The other story that really we don't know the answer to at this point is what the House is going to do. It looks like they're going to have a long night ahead of them as they try to beat the treaty signing deadline, which we're told could happen at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning, our time. Live in Washington, Tom Cole, 7 News. Tom, thank you. Stay with 7 News for continuing coverage of America's mission of peace. We will bring you developments as they happen. In world news at this hour, a Romanian airliner crashed today in Italy. Officials fear all 41 passengers on board are dead. The plane reportedly crashed and caught fire just moments after leaving Verona. That's in the northern Italy portion of the country after se about 75 miles west of Milan. Most of those passengers are said to be Italian. At least 17 people died when a ferry caught fire in the Philippines. Rescuers have pulled more than 100 people from the water, but dozens are still missing. The ship holds up to 400 people, but it was apparently not at full capacity. Even so, survivors say there were not enough life vests to go around. And Cuban President Fidel Castro is in Japan. The country's prime minister reportedly told Castro to improve Cuba's human rights record if he wants better relations with Tokyo. Castro reportedly blamed U.S. propaganda for exaggerating human rights abuses in Cuba. The teen accused of killing a Boston Honors student is behind bars. His family insists he is innocent. That story ahead at 5.30. A possible break in the case of sabotage that led to a deadly train derailment. Experts say a devastating earthquake will happen in New England. Seven News reports on what's being done to prepare. And students jump on the information superhighway, taking the stress-free road to college. Market took a hit today. Yes, it's tough out there. Oh, I don't know. That bar cheers, it's packed every night. They're doing great. I'm sure. Anyway, that deal fell through, and, and we're thinking about suing. Oh, I know a great lawyer. Really? Yeah, Matlock. Matlock? He's a little old, but he's never lost a case. Undefeated. Some people know CNBC is the first place for business news. Oh, time for hard copy. And some don't. CNBC, when you're tired of tuning out, tune in. Set in the heart of the city, the Bostonian Hotel is the perfect place to experience all that Boston offers. You'll enjoy superb accommodations, elegant dining in our award-winning Seasons Restaurant, and a level of service that sets the Bostonian apart. All in a charming, intimate setting that is Boston at its most inviting. And at a special weekend rate, starting at $139, that makes it all the more inviting. For reservations, call 1-800-343-0922. With so many viewing choices, Zenith makes selecting and recording programs simple at last. Featuring Starsight, the only on-screen program guide that lets you select any show, any time, and record at the touch of a button. Available now with Zenith's best picture ever. Zenith with Starsight. See them at your Zenith dealer. It's Caldor's Best Holiday One Day Sale. Thursday, 6 a.m. to midnight. Save 20 to over 70%. Save on Barbie and Fisher Price Toys, men's and women's knit tops, men's pro team outerwear, and all gold and gemstone jewelry. Thursday, 6 a.m. to midnight. Merry Christmas from Caldor. Snozzages. Snozzages. Treats for dogs. <laughs> Nobody hits the ice like the seven sports team. Gene Levante, the red-hot center with the home ice advantage. Fran Charles, the rookie winger with the skills and speed to score big. Gary Gillis, the seasoned veteran who has all the right moves. And John Dennis, stopping the competition cold with experience that matters. All righty, fellas. Let's kick some ice. The 7 Sports Team, only on 7 News. Time for New England's current weather conditions and forecast with Harvey Leonard. This is 7 Weather. If things keep going the way the charts are kind of indicating to me that they're going, this may be one heck of a December before all is said and done. And if you have 
a lot of holiday shopping that you want to do, tonight might be a nice time if you have a little bit of time before the weather starts to interfere perhaps with your plans. We have an interesting, interesting several days ahead. 26 is the temperature now in Boston, still cold. Northwest breeze is diminished, so the wind chill is at least above zero. Dry air at a rising barometer. Let's show you how cold it was. And if you were out early this morning, you know it, especially in some of the valley areas and, and elevated areas. Two below uh, today in uh, Chicopee and Springfield, 10 below in Keene, New Hampshire, and 6 below in Concord, New Hampshire, also 5 and 6 below at the two reports we get out of Jaffrey, New Hampshire. And it's still plenty cold now, and because it's going to be clear the first part of tonight, temperatures will be falling off quickly, especially in the outlying areas. Then the clouds will come in, but that's probably not going to be until the wee hours of the morning. High pressure is still protecting us, but then after midnight, the clouds will start to make progress in our direction. Once they come in, then the snow won't be that far behind, as you can see. But we have to get back into this area right here. That has to reach us, and it does not look like that's going to get here in time to impact the morning commute. The first flakes could be flying, though, especially in the western part of our viewing area before the morning commute's over. But I think essentially the snow will be overspreading the area mid to late morning, and it's tomorrow afternoon that's going to prove to be a snowy one indeed, with accumulating snow, again, with the cold ground that does exist. Now look at all the cold temperatures that are around, but look at this tremendous warmth that's down over the southeast and also in the lower Midwest. As that warm air rides up and over the cold air, that produces the snow. That's what's moving in our direction. And as this wave of low pressure bumps into the cold high, we're cold enough to have snow for most of this particular event, which means late tomorrow morning into tomorrow evening, and then it may end as some freezing rain or freezing drizzle, and we have a second storm that may play a part in our weather. In fact, likely will later Friday into Saturday with a wintry mix out of that. So we have a lot to go through. Let's first give you the forecast for tonight. Clear and very cold. Clouds will be coming in late tonight, very late. Temperature about 17 at dawn in Boston, 0 to 10 in the northern suburbs. Snow arriving before noon by the evening commute tomorrow, which doesn't look good. 1 to 3 inches on the ground, steady snow falling, upper teens well inland, low 30s on the Cape. The Cape will be the first to get a change to rain, but we'll still have snow for a while tomorrow night. Total accumulations for most of us, 2 to 5 before it ends as ice. And then Friday, just cloudy or a little freezing drizzle, but steadier mixed precipitation moving in in the afternoon. Some ice there, and there could be a mix or a change to snow Friday night or early Saturday. That's a mouthful, so we'll try to explain a little more at 5.30 and 6. He's just filled with good news that today. That he is. <laughs> Hillary Clinton gave some hospital patients a dose of holiday cheer today. And Mrs. Clinton dropped by the Children's National Medical Center in Washington, D.C. She visited several wards of that hospital to the delight of the children. And later on, Mrs. Clinton, along with Santa Claus and Socks the Cat, answered the kids' questions in the hospital atrium. Talk about the Wild West, wicked weather pounds, California and Oregon, leaving death and destruction. We have that story coming up at 5.30. A mega merger between two powerhouse Bay State banks. What will it really mean for consumers? Relieving migraine pain with massage inside the mouth. I'm Allison Gilman, an alternative approach coming up in HealthCast. Seven News is on the internet, and we want you to join us at www.whda.com. I see a lot of people that put up with scratch lenses, and a scratch lens means they're not seeing properly, and for me, that's a real problem. LensCrafter's new Dura lens can help make that problem go away. This is steel wool on a typical scratch-resistant lens, and this is a Dura lens. No other plastic lens is more scratch-resistant than a Dura lens. Looks great. Only LensCrafter's has them, and even these will be ready in about an hour. Dura lenses help me help people see better. I feel really good about that. LensCrafter's, helping people see better, one hour at a time. Energizer batteries keep going and going. Coming up next on 7 News. Find out why some critics say Sense and Sensibility with Emma Thompson is the best movie of the year in 7 Entertainment. Got your Eye Mattel's Ultimator Foam Missile Launcher? <laughs> Got a coupon? Whoops! Shop Walmart for your kids, where you always save on toys. With coupons, you save sometimes. With Walmart, always. Got your eye on my size Princess Barbie? 
You've got a coupon. Whoops. Shop Walmart for your kids, where you always save on toys. With coupons, you save sometimes. With Walmart, always. Now, the latest health advances and medical news. Time for 7 HealthCast. In HealthCast tonight, an unusual way to relieve migraine pain. It's a technique called muscle therapy. Part of the treatment is done inside the mouth. HealthCast reporter Allison Gilman has the story. 49-year-old Linda Harrell of Cambridge is a veteran of migraine headaches. Chronic sinus infections are the root of the problem, and the result, migraines. It was constant, um, nauseating pain. Linda was ready to try a new alternative approach to solve her headache problem. She turned to hour-long muscle therapy sessions at the Spence Center in Cambridge. And how about the headaches? How have they been? I had one last night. Muscle therapist Cindy Stewart has extra training beyond that of a massage therapist. Her expertise takes her inside Linda's mouth to help bring migraine relief. 40% of the fluids that drain from the brain drain down along the optic and, and uh, olfactory nerves. So what I'm doing is massaging the, the hard and soft palate of the mouth and encouraging the fluid to flow quicker than it, it normally would. Stewart says muscle therapy is not a cure for Linda's migraines, but it does make them more manageable, less frequent, and less severe. Linda has been able to cut down on her antibiotics and migraine medicine since she began this treatment in October. Experts say this kind of approach is gaining growing acceptance among doctors and their patients. Certainly in patients that have tried a lot of different therapies for headaches and have not been successful in headache relief, it's worth a try. My headaches right now are less frequent and the pain has been less severe. Linda's palate massage lasts as long as 20 minutes every session. The first six treatments cost $350 and medical insurance usually won't pay for it. While there are no medical studies that prove this approach really works for every migraine sufferer, Linda Harrell says she feels better today than she has in years. That's HealthCast and I'm Allison Gilman. A crackdown on deadbeat parents. One of the Bay State's most wanted is arrested. That story's coming up on 7 News at 5.30. On the road to the White House, another presidential contender makes it official in New Hampshire. And taking the stress out of applying for college. The story in our Cyber 7 report. If you want relief from minor arthritis pain, turn up the heat on arthritis. Just minutes after applying Ultra Strength Bengay, you can actually see the heat. It's the strongest, most advanced Bengay ever, with the heating power of three pain relievers. So turn up the heat on arthritis. Hey Santa, I've been good as gold. Sears has just what she deserves. Fine jewelry, all on sale now. 30 to 50% off the fine jewelry she wants. Come see the merry side of Sears. This is going to be my first Christmas away from home. Our son, Warren, enlisted in the Navy. He's a fireman. See, ever since I can remember my parents, well, they give me a Hallmark ornament. This was his first one. First one. Well, when I got my license. I got him a car. A car? <laughs> so, this year, we sent him a fire truck. <laughs> Help someone remember this Christmas forever with a Hallmark keepsake ornament. I opened up my ornament. All of a sudden, it was Christmas. It happens in the hospital. It happens at home. When heartburn flares up, the number one choice of hospitals is fast-acting Maalox. Hospitals can count on it for speed, and that's just what you need. Maalox, the first choice for hospitals, the fast choice for home. I can't believe we're eating a prune. We are. Sweet, moist, delicious. You're changing our mind. I always do. California prunes, let your mouth make your mind up. It's Caldor's best holiday one-day sale. For 18 hours, save 20 to over 70%. Thursday, 6 a.m. to midnight, save 25% off all Barbie and Fisher Price toys, board games, and bicycles. Take 45% off men's and women's knit tops and 50% off men's protein outerwear and fleece. Take 55% off pure cotton sheet sets. Then 70% plus an additional 10% off all gold and gemstone jewelry. Thursday only, 6 a.m. to midnight. Merry Christmas from Caldor. Across New England the next few weeks, thousands of high school seniors must meet college application deadlines. And it's a stressful time, especially if a student is applying to several colleges. But in tonight's Cyber 7 report, Mike Lawrence tells us about software made right here in Massachusetts that's providing relief.
do... Massachusetts high school that. senior Emily so Hills finished four college applications in an afternoon. Well, without the software, I would have had to photocopy all the applications, type, um, write them all out, and then bring them to a typist or type it out. But this, I just had to put it all in, and then it was done. You enter your school and personal information just once, write one universal essay, pop out the diskette, and mail it to a company called College Link. In fact, they can even receive the information by email using a modem. College Link staffers plug the information into their system and, using custom forms for any of more than 700 colleges, laser print your applications for $5 each, then send them to you to sign and mail. And the guidance counselors saw my applications and they thought they're absolutely beautiful. And then they started telling people about it. Like after I had used it, I was kind of the guinea pig. A student is going to, somewhere down the road, uh, input some information into a computer database or onto a network, pick the colleges and universities they want to apply to, say send. Most college admissions offices are drowning in paper applications this time of year. Boston University expects more than 23,000. The director of admissions says computerized apps get no special treatment, but... The student who's using uh, a, a computer to prepare it has the advantage of things like spell check and all of that, uh, which I think will improve the product. It was far less stressful for Emily's family than two years ago when her older sister wrote eight separate applications, then the family hired a typist. College Inc. isn't going to get you into the college of your choice, but it certainly will make applying to the college a lot easier. Just ask Wellesley College student Sonia Vesson, who credits College Link with just helping her survive the application process. How did you do on all those applications? How many did you file? <laughs> 24. College Link is one of three programs on the market that allow you to apply electronically. Each works in a different way. If you'd like more information, send me an email. Our address, cyber7 at whdh.com. I'm Mike Lawrence, 7 News. That is a tough process. I mean, it was a long time ago when I was going through it, but uh, it was tough then, so I can't imagine what it's like Every now. little bit helps. All that computer technology yeah. really making a difference. Absolutely. That's going to wrap up 7 News First at 5. I'm Kim Kerrigan. I'm John Marler. Coming up on 7 News at 5.30, his family says he's innocent. He's the Boston teen police say gunned down an honor student for his jacket. He's in court today. A possible break in a deadly case of sabotage in the tracks of Arizona. In 7 Education, preschoolers and high schoolers sharing the same classroom. And in 7 Entertainment, actress Emma Thompson teams up with Hugh Grant in a film. 7 News at 5.30 is coming up next.